Hi and welcome back to Get Fit Guy, Kevin Don here. In episode 668 last week, I noted that I wasn't sure how I'd get away with framing philosophical ideas as fitness, but, you know, that I'd give it a damn good try. And this week, here is a damn good try at just that for you. I also wanted to note that although I have received some emails from the haters about philosophy and critical thought and being labeled a pedant, I have received more emails from listeners who appreciate and enjoy that I'm trying to create a place where people leave with abilities like how to think objectively and how to source evidence for their own fitness journeys. So if you're one of those people that listens each week and gets absolutely furious that I don't do podcasts that fit in with exactly what you want, then either send me a bunch of money and I'll record a podcast each week just for you, or accept that you aren't the main character in the story of humanity, and there are some things that you will and won't like, and that's okay. On to this week's episode. As the title suggests, things are about to get a little bit philosophical. I mean, strictly speaking, every week is actually philosophical because I share knowledge, and epistemology, or what we know and how we know it, is a branch of philosophy, and so is logic. Uh, you probably realize by now I'm a logical thinker, and in fact, Mr. Spock himself has nothing on my ability to think in purely black and white terms. You also may have noticed that I've mentioned Star Trek several times over the last 18 months. Big fan. Cartesian dualism. What is that? Well, y'all have probably heard of the phrase, I think, therefore I am, most popularly known in the Latin, cogito, ergo sum, but actually first recorded as Je pense, donc je suis, in René Descartes' 1637 book, Discourse on the Method. Descartes believed that there are two kinds of things, mind and matter. So there's a difference between what is mental and what is physical. The opposite of dualism would be monism, where there's only one. And I want to take a moment here, as always, since people think I have time each week to cover every possibility, like my podcast is some kind of quantum wave function, it's not. There are significantly more schools of thought about the mind-body problem than purely dualism or monism, but for the purposes of this podcast, we'll keep it simple. So what do you think, dear listeners? Philosophy is all about thinking and asking questions. Do you believe that the mind and the body are separate entities? Do you think that we have a soul, perhaps, that leaves our bodies when we die? Then maybe you're a dualist. Maybe you believe that the mind and the body are one and that we're just a collection of processes and chemical reactions. And where those cease to be, we also cease to be. Maybe you're a monist or a reductionist reducing us just to bundles of physical processes. But either way, we have the same outcome of a claim for pursuing fitness. Because either your mind and your body are separate entities, in which case the body is a vessel for containing and transporting the mind during its time here on Earth, in which case it's advisable to maintain the body in top condition, just like you would a plane that carries passengers. Or... Your mind and body are the same entity, in which case survival of the mind depends on you keeping the body surviving. Therefore, it's still advisable for you to maintain your body in its top condition. The only scenario where not maintaining your body in optimal condition would matter would be if we were spirits floating around with no physical body, and this is not the case. So why am I bringing up dualism and fitness? Well, if you were cynical, it's because you'd think it was so I could ram some more philosophy down your throats. However, that's not the case. It's because I've trained a lot of people and have noticed a trend, let's say. First of all, I have to let you know I do not believe in free will. I am a determinist. And I see this as being a deterministic universe which would be a 20,000 word podcast. So I'll pretty much leave it there. But to put it simply, if you believe in cause and effect, then you're believing in determinism. Now, I'm here right now speaking to you and you are wherever you are right now 
listening to me. And that's because of something that we have in common. In fact, we have it in common with all of humanity, and it's called the Big Bang. The universe began with a singularity. Before I get some heat from creationists, this idea is still compatible because we're here now because of God creating the universe. Therefore, the universe is deterministic, whether you believe in God or the Big Bang, because it was the effect of a creationist cause. Hope you're following so far. I know that my mind makes unique connections that maybe the more neurotypical among us can't follow easily. Now, during my experiences as a coach, speaking with trainees from novices to Olympians, there's a common thread. They didn't start training with the goal of sporting excellence. You know, there was something else, something deterministic. So I know a champion bodybuilder who now at the pinnacle of aesthetics actually took up bodybuilding because at 15 years old, he was bullied at school for looking like a fat chipmunk. And I know others who took up CrossFit because, frankly, it's painful. And nothing takes away from the pain that you feel inside, like some pain from the outside. So it seems to me that, you know, in the case of my friend who's a bodybuilder, him becoming a bodybuilder was deterministic. It was determined by being bullied. I had another client whose wife told him that she no longer found him attractive and said that he looked like Santa Claus. So then he hit the gym hard and lost over 100 pounds. Another deterministic reason. So if we have external reasons for going to train, this would make doing fitness deterministic. It also makes a case for a more modest type approach. I have a friend from Canada who's a hockey player, right? And they were going through a bad time at home. So they started doing CrossFit. And the reason was, as I mentioned earlier, it's hard. Uh, they wanted some physical pain to distract from their stress and their problems to use that as a coping strategy. But what happened next was adaptation. They adapted to the demands. So what did they do? Well, they added more. So they started doing double sessions. Then it was double sessions and ice plunges and double sessions and cold water swimming. Then it was double sessions, cold water swimming, and even more hockey. Eventually, they got injured. And then there was no more fitness as a coping strategy, and they were forced to confront their issues. It was messy. Now, I've also seen where people go, absolutely all in on fitness you know like they got like the t-shirts they got all the gear it's all they talk about it's a bit like hanging out with a vegan and then the next thing they weren't doing fitness anymore they were all in on tarot cards and energy healing and shamans and to me that's kind of like you've just done the ultimate in a dualistic approach because you went all in and only training the body then you stopped and went full sand on only training your spirit or the mind. And I believe that we need both. So if we're coming to fitness because of some determinism, then we need to say, yes, fitness is great for both dualists and monists and looking after the body is critical. But we also need to have a chance to reflect upon our reasons. What is the cause that's driving us to training? Do you want to train because you're unhappy with how you looked in photographs that you saw of yourself at your cousin's wedding? Did someone pass a remark on your weight or how skinny your calves were? Did you get back negative results from a physical at the doctor's? Do you feel lonely and going to the gym or going and doing a sport was a good way to build a social network? I know a lot of people use golf, for example, as a, as a good way to network. All of this is deterministic. And I think that we should be thinking about the reasons that have brought us to do what we do and work on that, as well as working on our bodies. There's a famous Japanese manga called Ghost in the Shell. And I think that we can take that and we can change that up a little bit and use it as a maxim for our approach to well being, which would be the ghost and the shell.
As always, thank you for listening. Send any fun emails to me at getfitguy at quickanddirtytips.com. Get Fit Guy is a quick and dirty tips.com podcast. Thanks to the team at Quick and Dirty Tips, Morgan Christensen, Holly Hutchins, Director of Podcasts, Brennan Getchus, um, Davina Tomlin, and me, Kevin Don. If you have a question for me, leave me a voicemail at 510-353-3104 or send me an email, getfitguy at quickanddirtytips.com. Visit quickanddirtytips.com for more information or check out the show notes in your podcast app. 